throughout the year, the sun is rising in different places. Over uh, in winter, the sun rises there. And then we have January, February, March, April, May, June. At last, the sun is rising uh, from beyond the heelstone. In the course of the last century, probably millions of people have been here and millions of photographs have been taken. And almost everybody who's been here taking a photograph looking that way at the heelstone has taken it wrongly. Uh, firstly, the axis of this monument is not in line with the heelstone, it's slightly to the left. And if you were out there by the heelstone now, you'll see an arrow that's been laid in the grass to show where the axis of the monument is, slightly to the left. But as you see it, the heelstone is not standing higher than the horizon behind it. So every photograph taken like that is, although it's pretty, it is not telling us anything about the meaning of the monument. What we have to do is what Howard is, do what Howard is doing now. You get down on the ground and from this low level, take photographs just like that. When you're down there, <laughs> when, you're, when you're down there, you see that in fact the top of the stone is above the horizon. Uh, today, the <coughs> sun rises on June the 21st pretty well behind the, uh, the stone. But four and a half thousand years ago, the sun was rising to the left of the stone and the distance was about one degree of arc. Uh, the, uh, the sunrise for the summer solstice has moved from that position, uh, one degree of arc to the left, to the position where it is now. Uh, but even now, the same magic works. What does happen every time there's a clear sky sunrise in the middle of June, the shadow of that stone comes right through the central arch, comes right the way through here and reaches the altar stone. Altar stone. And I have records of people who've seen it, who were lucky enough to be here on such a day and see that that shadow does come all the way through as far as there. Now, this is a very careful arrangement. It's no accident this happens. Uh, although I spotted this 20 odd years ago, I didn't have uh, really strong proof from anywhere else that could uh, uh, really state firmly that this was a deliberate arrangement. But I've been going to Drombeg Stone Circle in County Cork these last five years and I've been into that circle about a hundred times now uh, analyzing it completely, photographing it, surveying it as well and uh, taking photographs not only at the summer solstice sunrise but the winter solstice and the equinoxes and the cross quarter dates. In the case of Drombeg, it's all there. All those eight dates of the ancient calendar are recorded in the positions of the stones. They're very carefully arranged and two of them were clearly feminine stones. Uh, for one thing, one of them has a vulva carved into it. I mean, that really declares its femininity. And another is the shape of a lozenge, again, uh, strongly indicating is a feminine stone. And those two stones are the ones at Drombeg which at these, on these eight dates of the year receive a male shadow from a male stone. And one of these male stones has a phallus carved on it. You know, it's a straight-sided, it's pretty obviously uh, male because uh, the carving is shouting it at us. Ithy phallus is the word, an erect penis, is on the stone. And, th and that stone and the other male stones are throwing shadows onto the female stones. 
So what does all that mean? Certainly uh, it's enough to stop and just say there, there's some fertility message here which was of the deepest interest to uh, a farming society. But I think we can go, go farther than that. But it, it's enough to stop there really. But if we want to go farther, then we're talking about a marriage, a union between the Sky Father and the Earth Mother. The Earth Mother is represented by the Ring of Stones. Uh, the stones are standing earth fast in her land. And the male stones are serving as the uh, proxy on Earth for the Sky Father, who in this instance is represented by the Sun. The shining sun is throwing a shadow that joins, as in marriage, uh, a male stone with a female stone. This is brilliant for Drum Beg, and I've been finding it for other stone circles as well, across Britain and, and Ireland. Now we come back to Stonehenge, where we are here. We've got the same thing happening, uh, and it's visually uh, obvious. You can just see it, uh, as long as you get down low. Now, uh, a problem for lots of archaeologists writing books is that they say that, you know, looking at this alignment here, you can only get, at the same time, two or three or four people able to see it happening. Yes, true, uh, it's a problem. But if you're out there around the heelstone, out to its left, you could have a hundred people there watching the shadow come in, watching this magical moment of the union between uh, the sky and the earth by vision of this phallic shadow but it's terrific and when I do my guided tours uh, during the daytime no one's allowed in here so we have to be down there but down there I am next to the heel stone and I'm just saying this is the way to really understand and admire uh, Stonehenge itself so really Stonehenge is working because of that heel stone and this recumbent female stone waiting for it. And they unite only in the week of midsummer uh, at sunrise. Otherwise, all these other stones are blocking it. The sun, yes, cannot get through. Uh, moreover, the whole thing is made stronger because it's coming through this doorway. It's not a doorway, really. It's a vulva entrance into the monument. The whole thing here is, is a womb of the Earth Mother and that's really how it is probably for most of the stone circles in which there's been any deliberate arrangement of stones in a pattern of some sort. Uh, as for the rest, the whole rest, well all the rest makes it a, a very fine monument and there are additional small things happening everywhere else but they are secondary to this primary uh, objective which was planned into this. But go to Avery and you can find the same thing there and at several other monuments which I've already surveyed. In addition to that, there's a lot more all across Britain and Ireland which I want other people to go and survey. But uh, go there in the daytime to, you know, to, to get a sense of what every stone circle is. But go back the next morning at sunrise. It's the magic moment. That's when I urge you all to go there and research. Keep it up. Thank you. We'll stop there.